The wet season has ended in prehistoric Niger, and smaller creeks and rivers are drying up, but the mass amount of herbivores continue to forage. Amongst them are the two young Oranosaurus, now at 1.5 meters long, and despite the many dangers and close calls they have experienced, continue to play away from the adults, who are often too busy to keep track of the rowdy brothers. As they race and wrestle in the undergrowth, one of the brothers pushes his sibling through some shrubs that was covering the edge of an embankment. Both of them tumble down the muddy slope, unable to grip or stop themselves, and they slide for a few seconds before reaching the bottom, filled with ankle-deep stagnant water. The embankment is only about a meter high, but it is too slippery for the brothers to get back up to. So they walk along the nearly dry creek to find an easier way back to the herd. Rounding a corner, they find something they had never seen before. Before them is over a dozen small crocodile-like reptiles with broad duck-like jaws. These odd-looking reptiles are Anatosuchus, a distant relative of modern crocodilians with an odd-shaped head and much longer legs. Though at a maximum of 80 centimeters, they are little threat to the two Oranosaurus, who have suddenly appeared in front of them. For a while, the two species stare at each other. The brothers have never seen these odd-looking crocodiles before, and the Anatosuchus aren't sure whether to go back to searching for food. Eventually, the young hadrosaurs look at each other, and cautiously step forward. Carefully, they trod through the shallow water, but the eyes of the Anatosuchus stay locked on them, making the brothers nervous. The small predators have barely moved, and eventually the brothers' path takes them close to one. Up close they don't look very menacing, however when they get too close, the small croc opens his jaws, revealing his sharp teeth, and lets out a long hiss. The two brothers jump back slightly at the display, but quickly gather their courage, and together, let out a loud honk. The hissing Anatosuchus leaps backwards in fright and gives the larger duo a wide berth. Now with dominance established, the brothers continue on their way, and the Anatosuchus return to looking for food. They are searching for any amphibians or crustaceans still in the shallow water or mud, skimming their wide mouths through the water, hoping to knock into or disturb any prey, and then snap them up before swallowing them whole. The brothers move down the muddy creek, watching the small crocodiles while also hoping to find a suitable way back. They are about to leave the Anatosuchus behind, when from the rear, they hear a shrill cry. Turning around, they see the formerly slow-moving Anatosuchus bolting towards them, but not to attack. They are fleeing. Around the bend comes a larger crocodilomorph, Ariariptosuchus the attack dog of the crocodilians. He is also a terrestrial croc, galloping on muscular legs, looking to snap up one of the smaller Anatosuchus, who flee past the two brothers. The Oranosaurus siblings do not run, however. They allow the Anatosuchus to pass them and stare down the approaching predator. The Oriptosuchus stops a few feet before the juvenile hadrosaurs. Being so focused on getting a meal, he didn't see them until now and certainly didn't expect them to stand defiantly in his path. The brothers are like statues, glaring at the predator that is almost as large as they are, breathing heavily and waiting for its next move. Not intimidated by the youngster's bravery, the predator lunges forward, going for the left brother, but his target ducks under him and then slams its head across his own, sending him crashing into the mud. He tries to stand, but both brothers are on him quickly, Together, they rear up onto their hind legs and slam their arms into his body one at a time. He tries to bite them, but when one of the herbivores rears up, the other holds him down, never giving him an opportunity to retaliate. The predator is pushed more and more into the mud. The attacks by the Uranosaurus aren't injuring the armored Oryptosuchus, but it is clear that fighting two opponents at once was a bad idea. Reluctantly, his thoughts turn to escape, as he digs his limbs into the mud and pulls himself away as best he can, all the time being stomped on again and again. Eventually he slides far enough that he can get to his feet 
and while covered head to toe in mud, gallops away. His biggest injury being to his pride. The brothers watch the carnivore flee and then turn back to the path they were on. Out of the bushes, the heads of the Anatasukas begin to appear, making sure the coast is clear. And then they all run out, chirping to each other. Some even approach the Uranosaurus. They then form up and continue down the creek, their chirping seeming to call to the brothers. The two look confusingly at each other, but decide to follow the reptiles that they have unwittingly saved. A few minutes pass, and the odd group end up coming to a large river, and to their right, the brothers see their herd, drinking by the water's edge. Rejoiced to see their family, the two Aranosaurus see the Anatosuchus wading at the water's edge, going right back to feeding. One of the small crocs chirps at the brothers, as if to say goodbye. The brothers call out in return, happy to see their little friends safe, and then run to their family. This would be a day that both species would remember for a long time. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down another incredible looking crocodilian, Anatosuchus. Anatosuchus was a small Notosuchian crocodilomorph that lived in the nation of Niger between 125 and 100 million years ago, in the early Cretaceous. Its name means duck-billed crocodile. Originally discovered in 2003, two skeletons have been discovered, including a juvenile and a mostly complete adult. As an adult, it grew between 70 and 80 centimetres long, and 30 centimetres tall, probably weighing only a few kilograms. Notosuchians are a family of terrestrial crocodiles, usually adapted to hunting small land prey. However, Antosuchus, despite being terrestrial, is more adapted to a semi-aquatic lifestyle. Like its close relatives, it has long legs with an erect gait, as opposed to modern crocs that have a splayed gait. Its feet were also far better suited for life on land. It may have been very quick on its feet, and possibly quite good at digging. It also retains the thick osteoderm armour that covers its body. However, this would have been little protection against the large dinosaurs it shared its home with. Now let's get to that head. The jaws were very broad and flat, with a small protrusion in the middle. It is suggested that Anatosuchus would wade through the shallow water, snapping at any prey it could find, or would sift through the water and mud with its hands or its jaws to excavate potential prey. It likely fed on fish, amphibians, and water invertebrates, its wide jaws giving its prey less chance to get away. The closest living allegory would be herons or storks, but also a bit like a platypus. Anatosuchus is an odd species. It is a terrestrial croc like other Notosuchians, but it has developed traits that help it hunt semi-aquatically, but isn't as aquatic as modern croc species. It occupies a specific niche that would only have been useful while the wetland slash delta environment it lived in stayed wet and humid. Terrestrial crocodilomorphs were more common than one might think, and regularly appeared throughout the Mesozoic and Cenozoic. However, the semi-aquatic forms always seem to succeed, no matter what is thrown at them, and continue on as top predators. Still, species like Antisuchus show how successful and diverse they could get, filling in niches even the dinosaurs weren't controlling, and in some cases, competing with each other. It's also pretty adorable. At under a meter in length, I reckon it would make a great pet. We should definitely release a colony into the wilds of northern Australia. They would do well there. But what do you think of Anatosuchus? Do you love this odd-looking croc, or do you think it was too specialised and destined for extinction? What lesser-known extinct creature would you like me to cover in a future episode? And until then, thank you for watching.